A massive missile slams into a crowded area, causing widespread destruction and heavy casualties. The aftermath is pure chaos, with survivors struggling amidst the wreckage. Abby Trent, a top CIA analyst, is deeply affected by the attack. She's shattered to learn her husband and daughter were killed in the blast. Consumed by grief she spends hours replaying happy memories through old family videos. Overwhelmed by guilt, Abby starts blaming herself for failing to prevent the tragedy. Welcome to Popcorn Movie Recaps Spoilers Ahead. Let's dive back in. Abby confronts her boss demanding to analyze the bombings and visit the site where the terrorists were captured. Her boss initially refuses, citing overwhelming pressure to keep her stateside and warning her about the risks. Despite his objections, Abby persists, and eventually, her boss relents. Citadel, the location in question, is a highly classified facility operated by the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. The US, UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. To top it off, there's also an Israeli Mossad rep on site. Nestled in a remote Jordanian desert, Citadel is designed to be impenetrable and isolated. Its primary function is to interrogate high-value targets, share top-secret intel, and detain dangerous terrorists. Ten months later, Abby is replaying an interrogation with a guy named Farron, who claims to be a fertilizer tycoon. He swears he's clueless about the Istanbul bombing, insisting he had no idea who his contact was. The last thing he did was set up a meeting between Hatchet and someone at Quezon Enterprises. Abby sends the intel to the CIA but her loss still haunts her. She's hell-bent on finding justice for her family and holding the culprits accountable. Meanwhile, two Citadel guards are trying to force-feed Farron. They're blasting loud annoying rock music to break him down. The guy looks weak and desperate as he refuses the food. Farron looks like he's at the end of his rope, weak and worn out. He rejects the food, tossing it aside. Miller, one of the guards, loses his cool, and starts beating Ferran. Abby bursts in, furious at Miller's brutality. They've clashed before over his violent tactics. She confronts Farron about Kaigan Enterprises, revealing their ties to a terrorist group. Farron plays dumb, claiming he's just a businessman. Abby pushes harder, showing him pictures of two guys and asking him to identify Hatchet. Farron scoffs and denies knowing him. She sends the intel back to CIA HQ in Virginia warning them that Hatchet's next target might be Anora, based on the missile attack data. Later, alone with her thoughts, Abby replays a message from her husband about a document linking the fertilizer deal to Kaigan Enterprises in Istanbul. Her moment of reflection is interrupted by Mia Davis, who urgently summons her to the recording room. Abby arrives expecting a crisis, only to find her team throwing her a surprise birthday party. Touched by the gesture, she appreciates the break from the heavy workload. Suspicious, she pulls Rashid aside questioning if he's behind her sudden trip back to Washington. He vehemently denies it, and hands her a gift. Meanwhile in Anora, the CIA is closing in on Hatchet. Armed forces surround the Kizan Enterprise building, ready to arrest the dangerous suspect. The operation is a success, and Hatchet is apprehended. Back at Citadel, Rashid gets a call from Special Ops, informing Abby that Hatchet is on his way there. Abby pours herself a stiff drink and fills Yuri in on Hatchet's capture. Yuri, as always, is itching for action, begging Abby to let him interrogate Hatchet and give him the raw intel. He claims to have people on the ground who can dig deeper. Abby shoots him down, making it clear she doesn't trust his methods. She reminds him bluntly that his country isn't exactly welcome at Citadel, and if he has a problem with that, he should take it up with Rashid. Later, Abby returns to Farron. The guy's still playing dumb about the hospital bombing. But when she casually mentions Hatchet's arrest at Kisan Enterprises, Farron's demeanor shifts noticeably. He chuckles and sarcastically remarks that the CIA better hope it's not him they caught. Meanwhile, the officers are discussing how dangerous Hatchet is, mentioning his signature weapon, a fish-skinning knife he uses to disfigure his victims. Yuri adds to the grim picture, revealing the Hebrew nickname for Hatchet. Shadim, meaning demon. He paints a chilling image of the aftermath of one massacre, where Hatchet bathed in the blood of his victims due to lack of water. As the officers prepare for Hatchet's arrival, Abby is stunned that they finally caught him just three days before she's scheduled to leave. Moments later, Hatchet is brought into Citadel, blindfolded. After a quick rundown of the situation, the CIA agents are informed that Abby will be leading the interrogation. But before she can even get started, Rashid announces that Captain Palau has requested a 45-minute one-on-one with Hatchet, no cameras, no recording. Apparently he has a direct order from Langley and there's nothing Rashid can do about it. Abby is furious. She's the one who's been leading the investigation, and she feels like she's being sidelined. Hatchet is taken to interrogation room 1, 
and Rashid orders Mia to cut the sound and video feed for the next 45 minutes. Once inside, they chain Hatchet up before removing his blindfold. Palau confronts Hatchet, demanding to know about his group. Tessa, translating for Hatchet, relays the questions. Palau quickly escalates the situation, starting to beat Hatchet, claiming he's buried friends because of the terrorists' actions. Hatchet remains stone-faced, refusing to answer. Enraged, Palau intensifies the beating, demanding answers about the Istanbul bombing and the group that sent him to Syria. But Hatchet stays silent. In another attempt to break Hatchet, they hang him up. Meanwhile, back in her room, Abby hears gunshots coming from the interrogation room. Rushing to the recording room, she demands they turn on the cameras. Rashid dismisses her concerns, thinking it's just blanks to scare Hatchet. But when Mia finally activates the cameras, they find both camera feeds blocked. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, Rashid declares a code red, activating the Scorcher team and calling for armed backup. Abby and Rashid race to the interrogation room, alerting their squad to the gunshots. Rashid authorizes his team to fire before breaching the room. Inside the interrogation room, they find a horrific scene. Palau is critically injured, and Hatchet lies motionless on the floor. Tessa is in shock, unable to speak. Rashid, Jordan, and an unidentified man rush Palau to the medical bay. The unidentified man suddenly obscures the camera before pulling out a knife. It's Hatchet, who brutally stabs both Rashid and the doctor, killing them. He then steals Rashid's ID and wristwatch. As Rashid lies dying, he warns Hatchet he won't escape Citadel. Hatchet simply replies, Who said anything about leaving? Back in the interrogation room, Abby senses something is terribly wrong. She rushes to the medical bay, only to find Palau and the doctor dead, with Rashid on the brink of death. With Rashid gone Yuri steps up declaring Abby in charge. They rush to the command center, ordering Mia to lock down the facility, but there's no response. Finding Mia dead in the recording room, Abby realizes the situation is critical. She orders a full lockdown, sealing off Citadel from the outside world. They need a non-lethal way to contain Hatchet. Suddenly Hatchet spots two unsuspecting officers. He seizes the opportunity to free all the detainees who immediately attack the guards. Abby realizes Hatchet's ultimate goal is to free Farron his loyal accomplice. She orders immediate non-lethal containment of the detainees. Trying to contact headquarters, Abby discovers all lines are dead. Guards rush to the cells, guns drawn, demanding the prisoners return to their cells or face being shot. Abby grabs a communications manual, desperate to find a way out of this mess. Just then, a piercing alarm blares through the facility. All communications to the outside world have been cut off, and if they don't report back to headquarters within an hour, a missile will destroy Citadel. Yuri is terrified of the consequences of failure, but Abby explains that this is a fail-safe protocol for remote bases in hostile territories. Meanwhile, Miller and his officers are struggling to regain control of the prisoners. They're subduing the resisting inmates one by one, forcing them back into their cells. Just as they're making progress, Hatchet strikes again. With a clever move he sabotages the jail's electricity, plunging the entire facility into darkness. Who's fatally shot in the ensuing struggle? Taking advantage of the darkness, Hatchet uses a hammer to kill Jordan while he's trying to subdue another inmate. Distracted by an old acquaintance among the prisoners, Wesley is shocked to find Jordan dead. When Abby learns about the open cells, she rushes to Miller's side with Yuri and Tessa, who are busy locking down the prisoners. Desperate for answers, Abby asks Miller if he saw Hatchet talking to Farron. She then hurries to interrogate Farron, hoping to uncover why Hatchet is there. But Farron remains tight lipped, unaffected by their threats or intimidation. As a final attempt, Abby asks if Hatchet came to save or kill him. With a cunning laugh, Farron tells them to ask Hatchet when they find him, or when he finds them. Abby puts Yuri in charge of the watchtower. He starts reviewing the camera footage and spots the chaplain, oblivious to the chaos unfolding in the cells. After a thorough check, Yuri informs Abby that there's no sign of Hatchet, but there are numerous blind spots in the surveillance system. Abby and Tessa head to the server room to secure the data. Before leaving, Abby asks Yuri if he's keeping an eye on things. Yuri assures her he is, but mentions that the system on level 4 is down. Suddenly Yuri's voice starts to break up, making it impossible for Abby to understand him. They arrive at the server room, a high-security chamber housing Citadel's black box, a repository of all classified intelligence. Abby explains to Tessa that the black box contains 10 years of backup data, including her entire investigation into the hospital bombing. As they inspect the system, Abby notices signs of tampering but no successful data breach. There have been multiple attempts to access the data remotely. Meanwhile Yuri is still monitoring the cameras. 
he discovers that Hatchet sabotaged the electricity, and makes a shocking realization. Tessa is the one who killed Mia. Desperate to warn Abby, he tries to transmit the information but the radio connection is garbled. Before he can relay the message clearly, Tessa, gun in hand turns to Abby. She apologizes for what she's about to do, but Abby doesn't flinch. In a swift move, Abby grabs the keyboard and strikes Tessa. After a fierce struggle, she manages to knock Tessa unconscious. Dragging Tessa's body to the cell block, Abby handcuffs her to a rail. The others are stunned to see Tessa incapacitated. They demand to know what happened, and Abby reveals Tessa's betrayal. She breaks the devastating news that there's no outside backup coming, as Citadel is under a security lockdown. If they can't re-establish communication within an hour, the entire facility will be destroyed by a drone strike. The news sends shockwaves through the group. Someone suggests killing the other inmates and blowing up the place to escape. But Abby, as the leader, refuses. Letting Hatchet escape is unacceptable. She instructs Miller and another guard to watch over Tessa while she and Wesley head to the armory. As they race towards the armory, the chaplain joins them. But before they reach their destination, a powerful explosion rocks the hallway, sending them crashing to the ground. Hatchet has already found what Abby was looking for. Shaken but determined, they pick themselves up, realizing that the real fight is just beginning. They push forward towards the day room. Hatchet bursts out, holding the chaplain at gunpoint. Before anyone can react, he fatally shoots Wesley and escapes with the chaplain as a hostage. Miller, enraged, decides to interrogate Tessa. He tortures her, breaking her fingers one by one to force information out of her. The other inmates can hear her screams. Abby radios Yuri, informing him of Wesley's death and Hatchet's escape with the chaplain. She asks for help locating Hatchet. Yuri, while reviewing the cameras, discovers the countdown to the missile strike is down to 30 minutes. He also realizes that Hatchet has tied the chaplain in a small room to prevent him from being heard. As Miller continues his brutal interrogation, Tessa finally breaks. Her confession sends shockwaves through Miller. She tells Miller that the only way to end this is to give Ferran to Hatchet. That's all he wants. Just as Miller is about to drag Ferran out, Abby returns. Taking charge, Miller shoots and kills Tessa, then turns the gun on Abby. They explain their desperate plan give Hatchet Ferran in exchange for their freedom. Disarmed and locked in a cell, Abby watches as they take Farron and leave to find Hatchet. Meanwhile, Yuri is struggling to restore communication. He's shocked to find Abby locked in a cell and immediately sets about freeing her. As Miller calls out to Hatchet for the exchange, he appears, swiftly finishing off one of the officers. A brutal fight ensues between Miller and Hatchet, ending with Miller's demise. Hatchet returns to Ferran, to discover he hasn't revealed any information. In a cold-blooded move, Hatchet eliminates Ferran as well. Abby and Yuri reunite in the day room, stunned by the horrific scene of Miller and Farron's bodies. They realize Hatchet intends to eliminate everyone involved, not rescue Farron. They decide to split up. Abby will try to establish communication from the rooftop, while Yuri hunts down Hatchet. Yuri hides near the main elevator, waiting for his target. When Hatchet finally appears, he uses the chaplain as a human shield. As the chaplain is pushed through the elevator doors, Yuri mistakes him for Hatchet and fires. The chaplain falls, mortally wounded. Abby reaches the watchtower and establishes contact with headquarters. She pleads with them to abort the drone mission, but they refuse, insisting the mission will proceed. Realizing the futility of arguing, Abby returns to the facility. Yuri, upon examining the body, discovers it's the chaplain. A fierce battle ensues between Yuri and Hatchet, ending with Yuri's death. Abby eventually finds Hatchet and holds him at gunpoint, demanding answers. Hatchet, unfazed, reveals a wider conspiracy, implicating agencies on both sides. He mentions a bomb planted in the server room by Tessa, designed to destroy all the evidence, including his own file. Knowing the facility is doomed, Abby leaves Hatchet locked in a room and escapes the building just as the drone strikes and destroys the facility. The dust settles, and a squadron of soldiers arrives, confirming there are no survivors. Believing they've successfully erased all evidence, they leave. Alone and injured, Abby is rescued by a passing car. As she gazes at the ruins of Citadel, she realizes the true extent of the conspiracy. The enemy is no longer an unknown threat. It's a tangible force that took everything from her. With a newfound determination, she vows to hunt them down and bring them to justice. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more thrilling content.